Well, Happy New Year and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. My name is Jeremy Grenhart, and I serve as music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland, and I'm also your host as our services have been online. This is my co-host is St. Cecilia, the patron saintess of music, and we are coming to you live and direct from our living room in Philadelphia. Just wanted to take two seconds to welcome everyone into the space. Old friends, you are most welcome here. It's great to see you. Welcome back. If you're new here, you're not sure what it means to be Christian or a Lutheran, guess what? You're also super welcome in this place. There's no exceptions to that rule. And the way we usually begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness. I explain it real quick. This is a time in which we can kind of reflect on our week. <clears throat> Maybe we're holding on to some things that have fallen a little bit short of the grace of God or we fail to do something and we don't want to hold on to it anymore. Uh, we can give that over because God promises to us through his word that he is a gracious and merciful and forgiving God. So we can just give those things back over to him. You know, and if you're like me, you get mad driving around the city and, <laughs> you know, maybe you do something that's a little unkind, you can give that over to God. But guess what? Um, it ranges up. So there's nothing that's too big or too small to give to God. And the practice we've been doing through our online services, because this is different for each and every one of us, is we just take a moment of silence to bring these things before the foot of the cross. So let's do that together right now. And as we come back together, I can give you some good news, probably the best news of your week. And that's that all of your sins, all of them, are known and forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a verse of our Kyrie, and that just means, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Amen. Well, it's now time in our service where we turn our hearts and our minds towards the Word. So if you want to go grab your Bibles, this is a great time to do it, or you can download the order of worship that comes along with the email. Um, and we're going to get into another one of Pastor Graham's most excellent messages. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus be my guide and hold me by your side and I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. Hello, my name is Richard Graham, and I'm a retired Lutheran pastor, and I'm honored to be able to participate in these worship services for Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bethesda. We're celebrating the second Sunday of Christmas in this worship service, and this is the prayer of the day for today. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. And the gospel lesson for this service is taken from the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that Gospel lesson we just shared the gospel lesson for this second Sunday of Christmas is sort of like the Christmas story according to St. John. Now, it's not like the Christmas story we are most familiar with. There are no shepherds, there are no magi, there are no angels, there is no manger. It's as if in this Christmas story, St. John is, is telling us what Christmas really means. And lots of people think that this passage that I just read is, in fact, a very early Christian poem, or maybe even a hymn, a reflection on what it meant that Jesus was born for us. Not a reflection on what that birth was actually like, but a reflection on what it meant. And you'll notice how much of what it meant seems to be caught up with the images of light. Jesus is the light coming into the world. Jesus is the Word of God made visible, made light to come into our world. And this is an important thing to remember at this particular time. Lots of people are familiar with our Lord Jesus as a good example to follow. Everybody should try to be like Jesus, you know? And we say that ourselves. I've said that plenty of times myself to people. We should try to be more like Jesus. Do you remember when people wore wristbands that said WWJD? It was supposed to remind them when they were in a difficult situation or had a hard thing to decide to look at that and think, what would Jesus do? But Jesus is not primarily an example for us. At least he's not an example first. Before that, he is a gift. He's the gift of light. And that light shows us how much God loves us. That light is, is, is shining everywhere, we say. That light shines in, in the whole world and the world doesn't overcome it. That light shows us that God is on our side. Jesus comes to be the light that tells us how much God loves us. 
Jesus is our Savior. Jesus died and rose for us. And because of that, Jesus is our example. But we don't follow Jesus with some sense that Jesus is keeping score. We don't follow Jesus with some sense that, well, every time you make a mistake, Jesus knows that and it makes him feel bad. We follow Jesus with joy because before anything else, Jesus came to be the light shining for us and shining on us and bringing us the warmth and the goodness of God's love in our hearts. This Christmas time, and especially with the world the way it is, let us remember that we are loved people, that God cares for us, that Jesus is the light of our lives and shines on us to bring us peace and joy. But then also you notice in this lesson in St. John, there's so much emphasis on the fact that Jesus is light for everyone. Jesus is the light that comes to enlighten all people. Jesus is the light that shines on everybody. And this is also worth thinking about. In this time of, of struggle and sadness for us, it's important to remember how much joy there is in the world and even how much joy God has poured out on people who don't know about God, who don't think about God, people who maybe never heard the name of Jesus. People who never heard the name of Jesus still love each other. They still love their husbands and wives and partners. They still love their children and care for their children. People who never heard the name of Jesus still try to take care of their communities. They still try to do good to their neighbors. And the reason they are able to do that is because the light of Jesus shines on everyone. When we name Jesus to people, we're not introducing them to someone who's foreign to them. We're introducing them to someone who is deep in their lives and they don't know it yet. Jesus shines to, to be the light on all people. It says so in the very first chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus is the light that comes for all people, breaks into the world for all people. Let us remember that because you know what? Sometimes when we share our faith, we do it in, in ways that are critical, you know? Y'all people better get with this because there's gonna be trouble if you don't. Jesus won't come to you unless you ask him to come. That's not true. It says it's not true. Jesus is deep embedded in the world and in the life of every human being. And we announce that with joy and we invite people to realize that truth, but we don't introduce Jesus to people who have no sense of him. Every loving action people make, every decent decision someone takes, every good heroic act that anybody does is motivated by the light of Jesus deep within them, whether they know this or not. And those of us who do know it are specially blessed. And we need to be able to talk about that more than we do. Anyway, this light of Jesus, this, this light of God in Jesus breaking into our world, is still pretty darn mysterious, you know? I, uh, I spent some time recently with one of my nieces, a, a very lovely young adult whom I don't get to see very often. And we were talking, and while we were talking, we noticed near us a beautiful nativity set. Beautiful white porcelain with gold trim, Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. Just, just this gorgeous, this gorgeous scene. And because this scene was set in a place where children are nurtured and cared for and loved very much, children had also decorated around this, this beautiful porcelain nativity set. And some child had cut out the shape of a rhinoceros and colored it green and pasted it on a popsicle stick and leaned that up against the Virgin Mary. And I said to my niece, I said, you know, that's very beautiful, but it's not actually likely that there was a rhinoceros by the manger. And she said to me, well, it's not any more unlikely than that Jesus looked as white as that when he was born. And I thought, whoa, that's true. This, this baby Jesus was a little child of color off on the edge of the civilized world. He was just one of a million little babies being born in those days, like now, out where people don't pay much attention. He wasn't born in a big city. He wasn't born in an important place. He wasn't born to, to, to parents who looked like most of us, you know. 
He was a baby of color in a place where people like him weren't thought to be very important. And yet that's the way God works. That's the way God's light breaks in, not the way we would necessarily think it ought to happen. We would have had in mind something, something a little more central, you know, something a little more easily organized. Jesus is born in a manger in Bethlehem to parents who are going to struggle. And in Jesus Christ, the light of God is breaking into our world with mercy and goodness and peace for all people. And those of us who recognize him, those of us who know him, who pray to him, those of us who are like that have a great responsibility to remember that God is at work necessarily sometimes off on the fringes of the world, off in the corner of your eyes. You know, you don't necessarily see God doing the great things that you would expect, but you see him doing little things with great mercy and great kindness. And you point to those things because those are the things that people most need to see, things that really touch their own lives. May this Christmas season continue to be a great blessing for us. May this be a time that, that touches our hearts in a way that sustains us for all the rest of the coming year. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Graham. Can I get an amen? I miss saying that with people. <laughs> anyway, let's sing together and then move into the prayers of the people. time for us to move into the prayers of the people. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take some time to both say goodbye to 2020 and let go of some things that maybe need letting go of. And we can also set prayerful intentions for the year that lies ahead. You can do one of a couple things. You can write something down <clears throat> that you want to leave in the past on a piece of paper, grab a bowl and we can burn that together, or you can light a candle uh, for an intention that you've set for 2021. There's, there's like no wrong way to do it. Just do you and, and move as the Spirit 
is guiding you. Prayers for the world. Lord, you have just given us the dawn of redeeming grace through the birth of your Son, and we thank you. But you know, I think some of your children have had a hard time staying oriented in gratitude this year. We could say so much about the myriad ways our global culture has been impacted by the pandemic, but at the end of the day, it's just been hard. We know that we're more connected than we've ever been, but it doesn't feel like that. We know that your blessings and grace are literally endless, but we, or at least I seem to forget that all the time. <clears throat> so I've literally been asking God, what should my prayers for the world be? Let's do one of two things. One, I have something that I'm asking to God help me let go of, and maybe you could do this exercise with me. I chose um, fear and anxiety. Um, you can choose anything you want, though, and I wrote it down on a little piece of paper right here, <clears throat> uh, and I'm going to let it go by burning it. And I'm also asking God for a restoration in each one of these petitions as well. And although an obvious prayer, I will be lighting a candle for the restoration of health in our world. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for the community. It feels a little funny to be praying for community, if I'm honest, um, because I, I miss my communities. And you might be feeling the same thing. I, I miss my church family. I miss my friends. I, make, I miss making music with like actual people. I miss laughter with other folks and small things like enjoying a cup of coffee at a bustling cafe. What an odd feeling it is to live in a city of one and a half million people and interact with almost no one. That brought a word to my mind to lift up in prayer. Now that word is isolation. As we talk about health, <clears throat> mental health is certainly part of this equation as well. So I wanted to be praying for anyone this morning who might be struggling with isolation and loneliness. I'm very ready to leave that behind and to give it up to God. So that's the word on my paper for this petition. You can write down anything you like. And my prayer for restoration is a simple one. The restoration of our communities. We are meant to be around people. So Lord, if it is your will, Please restore as many of your communities as possible, as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Prayers for the church. Lord, I miss your table. I actually thought about it and before the pandemic, I, I think there was a, a grand total of six Sundays in the previous 20 years that I didn't sit at your table on Sunday morning. Then I wondered if anyone else was feeling the same sense of loss around that. And we have also had to really work to find new ways to edify your name new ways to advance your kingdom. And I get to wondering if I could do more, or if I could do a better job at that. <clears throat> Am I just waiting for things to go back to normal? Or am I taking seriously the advancement of the gospel in any time or any circumstance? I find myself wishing I could do more, but falling into a trap that is difficult to detect. Uh, that's the trap of 
nostalgia. You can choose anything, but that's what I'm going to be burning this morning in the hopes that the Spirit might invigorate me and us to look forward with regards to advancing the gospel, not backwards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for the people. If you are anything like me, you get short answers in your prayer life. I don't get lengthy essays or detailed descriptions from God. It's usually just like a word or two. And when I was praying about how to sum up what people have been feeling in 2020, the one word I received was loss. People have lost family members and friends. We talked about the loss of community. Folks lost jobs, money, security, routines. You name it, people have lost it. And I'm about ready to be done with that. And your word tells us in Mark 11:24 that whatever we ask for in prayer, it will be yours. So I'm asking in Jesus' name for an end to loss and a restoration of abundance. And I don't mean this as it pertains to stuff. I pray for a loss of anxiety and loneliness, joblessness, fear, depression, isolation, and an abundance of purpose, vocation, hope, joy, peace, fellowship, laughter, and love. For all these things and the silent meditations of our hearts, we pray in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for sending your prayer requests in. As, as usual, you can do one of a few things. You can leave a little comment down below. You can be in touch with me or anybody on, on the cool council. We love praying for you. And uh, you're probably also going to want to take two minutes and go check out our website to find out the ways that you can both engage the ministry and also give to the ministry. We need your help. Uh, and you can find us at ChristLutheranBethesda.org. So take a couple minutes out of your day and go, go scope that out. Let's sing one more time. <clears throat> Thank you.
People of God, please receive this benediction. Almighty God, bless you now and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.